Oh, 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 oh. David Bishop, have you have you been a good little boy this year? I think I have, Mark or Santa. Have you? So, <laughs> no, I have not. I've been far from it. It's good to have you back. We're uh, this is this is our I guess it's our our holiday edition because we're we're talking about the the November numbers, e-grocery sales numbers, and we're recording this early December. So good to see you. Uh, happy to have you here. Let's get into it. David, what the hell's going on with delivery? Like, I'm, get, I'm getting whiplash. You know, uh, don't shoot the messenger, I guess that saying goes. You know, it, it keeps on going. Um, you know, again, top line up 5% deliveries, beating that plus 8, almost 9%. And uh, I anticipated I, or I sensed that you would have some antagonism toward uh, that result. And, you know, we no. tend to be agnostic. Just, well, OK, you know, you're you just, know what? You're just, I, I'm easily confused. Bear. I'm easily confused. You, you know that you're easily confused. So uh, here, here's what we'll do. We'll introduce to what we believe are contributing factors that are yep. leading to that performance. Um, with that being said, you know, these are not validated hypothesis directly from this information. However, with the right data set, we, we could answer these uh, these two. But to get right to it, I think, first of all, is, you know, we're seeing the power of availability really continue mm -hmm. to grow the delivery segment. I mean, again, th this is an area that, you know, we really haven't thought that much about before recently, I should say, because, you know, most of the availability, at least for first party, delivery had been, you know, closed uh, right. in terms of market coverage. What we have now is greater availability via these third party marketplaces. You know, DoorDash is kind of the, the largest new entrant challenging Instacart, right. obviously ships out there, you know, meandering in, in, the, in the night uh, trying to figure out where it's going. Uh, and then we have people like Uber Eats and even Amazon dipping their toe back into this and getting some positive receptions from a few regional so Regionals, far. Correct. Yeah. So again, you know, these marketplaces have a lot of traffic. And now what we're seeing is some of that traffic is now converting into additional business for some of these retailers who maybe have been recently added. I think beyond that, and not to overstate mm -hmm. the importance of availability, is promotion galore. I mean, if, if you think Black Friday kicks off the holiday season, it seems like one thing we have a lot of right now are promoting uh, memberships and subscriptions, right? Right. You know, you could look at Instacart right now, who's aggressively promoting, by the way, on retailers whose first party site is powered by Instacart. And the deal is 80% off one year of Instacart Plus. So instead of $99, it's $19, right? Save $80. So that that's that's a significant enticement. Well, I, you got, got to ask yourself is I, I would hope that you know that the margin on that is certainly a, a profitable one for Instacart. Well, I think in their first, uh, their debut quarterly conference call with mm -hmm. analysts, they did talk about the fact that they were going to invest in acquisition. And, you know, this is a form of that. And, you know, that's an extremely aggressive deal or discount, 80% mm -hmm. off. But I think it highlights just the challenges today of going out with kind of the same old subscription and expecting something different. Um, right. So they're, they're, they're really kind of juicing it right now to, to get as many new subscribers. And it appears that that, along with some of the other uh, things that we're seeing could be working. I mean, you can't discount even some of the national uh, grocers like Kroger, who is still offering through the balance of this year, for the most part, you know, $20 off um, the first delivery or, or in their case also or pickup. And, and there are also, you know, other national grocers who are also promoting their membership programs that are primarily geared towards delivery as opposed to pickup and delivery. Yeah, yeah. So how, how, from a regional grocer perspective, should they be evaluating a subscription slash membership program? Because, you know, we, we've, 
I've been in conversation with retailers who are contemplated putting one into place. And unless you are you you have a a really compelling offering that combines fuel rewards, that combines you know, other elements within a loyalty program that are somewhat unique. I mean, it, it can, it, if the only component really is savings on delivery, you're really beholden to the 3PL, are you not? You know, I, I think one distinction I just want to make is there are subscription offers and there are membership offers. So mm-hmm. Walmart Plus is really a membership offer that has uh, in addition to the fuel rewards, you know, other benefits, you know, real or perceived that they're offering to those people who sign up for it. Instacart, I should also add, recently kind of notched a, a nice uh, victory by securing Peacock um, mm-hmm. as an enticement to build more interest in its Instacart Plus. And in fact, you know, they, they actually do tell you that you're getting a, a streaming service for free that would have cost you five ninety nine a month or almost sixty dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of very tangible where someone could then look at that as an offset to why do I want to pay for you know Instacart's normal subscription? Now keep in mind they also in other places offer that significant discount. So. In the membership realm, you know, it's about having things that people really want in mm-hmm. addition to your services. For most regional grocers, they're not going to be able to secure that type of arrangement. And even fuel rewards may be more challenging for them unless there's some local or, or regional gro- uh, convenience stores that they can partner with. So it's it's more like a true subscription service, right? And, you know, some, if you look at a a national retailer like Albertsons and the banner that's in my market, Jewel, you know, they have fresh pass, pass, which is good for delivery and or pickup. What they add in addition to a lot of other features is a $5 monthly savings. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you could be paying $12.99 a month for their subscription, but what they're saying is, hey, you're really paying only $7.99 because we're giving you a $5 kind of credit savings to use at our stores. You could look at Walmart now and they now have Walmart bucks, right? Yeah. And so there are other things that they're doing. And of course, Walmart has a lot of our things like mobile pay and go. And again, right. assumes that the customer has value for that. So I think the subscription that retailers, regionals can look at, you could actually look at what Amazon's doing with both fresh and whole foods today. I mean, the news is out there that they're now testing a subscription service for their their delivery programs. So beyond paying for Prime, what they're saying now is um, you will have the opportunity to subscribe to a delivery service that will provide you, you know, free delivery, right? They, they came up with they're testing it in what, three markets, right? Yeah, and they're doing it across both banners. At the same time, mm-hmm. keep in mind, they, they've lowered their order threshold for free delivery back from 150 to what they claim is 100. But currently in our market, the Chicago market, the spending level to qualify for free delivery is back to 50. So they are doing a lot of testing. But I think when you look at the subscription, you really have to say, if 60% of all of our customers uh, that are actively online are only making one order a month, and I'm using data yep. that I'm referencing from the benchmarking. If we put out there a subscription that basically pays for itself if someone moves from one to two orders, you can see many retailers are doing that. I mean, again, look at Jewel. I mean, Jewel has a a subscription fee of twelve ninety nine a month when their standard or faster delivery is nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Um, they have some weird parts with their structure because their standard delivery now is only three ninety five, dollars right? So, you know, if you look at like Walmart, if you never had the membership, you're always paying $9.95. With the membership, you avoid the $9.95 and the only incremental cost that you could incur would be potentially relative to, you know, your form of express delivery. So let me, let me ask you this. You're, you're a regional or a metro regional with 20 stores. You're contemplating getting into a subscription program for, uh, for delivery. What would you recommend? What would be the prototypical arrangement? Well, the first thing I would do is build agreement on how we are going to evaluate 
the value of that subscription. Again, only 60% of our customers are buying or mm -hmm. placing one order a month, 20% are doing two, and the balance are above that. We have retention issues as we've talked about before. So the subscription could make it stickier for those people who are at two and beyond, right? Because now they see, hey, there is a clear benefit, right? I was already spending more than this in fees, so I am very clearly saving money by just staying there. And so that's somewhat of a loyalty effect to reward that usage behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, you can say, well, where do we set that? Most of them are set around 12, 11 to $12 a month. And it looks as though the break even for the consumer is around one and a half orders. And that's trying to move that single order household from once a month to twice a month. I think you could look at and say, how would this help us increase order frequency amongst those households that are only placing one order a month? And how could it help improve our retention rates for those who are more heavily using our, our services from a frequency standpoint? You could say, okay, if we came out with 995, where the big boys are doing that right. already, but we don't have all the other bells and whistles, how are our customers going to respond? Well, I think the first thing I would urge people to do is to pause for a moment and not assume that their customers know what all the other deals look like, right? right. Um, not, they may not even not do, shop not at doing those retailers. Yeah. So if you came out at 995 and you're currently offering delivery today at eight or 995, very clearly to the, your customers, they would see a benefit if they adjusted their ordering behavior. You can obviously make refinements to it. We're seeing plenty of that today. Again, depending on the market, that you're shopping for Amazon Fresh, the threshold for free delivery in my market is 50, other markets it's 100, and in other markets it may only be 35 if they're in one of the three test markets. So, you know, there's a lot to be learned in terms of how our customers receive, so long as we don't necessarily focus entirely on, well, what are the big boys doing and how can we possibly compete? Yeah. Because that assumes your customers are making the same comparisons. Speaking of the big boys, how did they fare in, uh, in November? Well, I mean, they're still really kind of kicking butt. And, uh, you know, <laughs> this is kind of indicative of the broader issues we have. Uh, you know, we saw strong growth for the value channels, whether that's mass you know, led by Walmart or hard discount led by Aldi. They're enjoying still strong monthly active user growth. All I, although I should note, you'd be happy for this. I'm not saying I'm happy to report, but you know, Mass's uh, new customer growth has slowed from, you know, 25 plus to around 14 or 15 plus percent. You know, what is that a sign of? Well, it could be a yeah. sign that uh, pressures are abating or it could be all the people who were interested in switching over to someone they, like they, Walmart they is just getting smaller and smaller, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, the but order frequency- Basically the damage is done, right? Uh, yeah. Now. You know, the issue really is this is a huge opportunity for Walmart because they've acquired a, a large swath of new customers over the last few months. Now it's their their job to keep them, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, order frequency at Walmart or Mass is, is, is trending in the same general direction as supermarkets. Both are feeling the pressure down about 5%. There, there is some pullback their spending is right around uh, inflation, maybe a little north of inflation, I should say. I think uh, overall it was around plus 6%. So it actually was higher than inflation. So that's a positive, but that ebbs and flows with your, your customer accounts, right? You know, your, your base shrinks, your average order of value tends to go up. But, but what Walmart's doing is they're really leaning in on two things. One is they're leaning in now on delivery and by the way, most of the delivery they're leaning into is first party distributed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they have a very good system. And I would say, hey, credit to Mercatus, maybe Walmart's reading your pricing reports that uh, <laughs> some folks did for you because they've tiered their delivery fees in such a way, kind of similar to the, the suggestions from that report. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you yeah. want the, the within one hour, they call Express, it's uh, $19.95, $10 Express charge plus the $9.95 yeah. delivery fee, assuming you're not a Walmart Plus. If you're a Walmart Plus, you raise the $9.95, you just pay the 10. But if you want it maybe a little quicker, not as quick, but still that same day, within three hours, 
it's it's fourteen ninety five. Five dollar express fee plus the nine ninety five. So, or if you want their standard, it's nine ninety five. Whether it's standard yeah. later the same day or the next day, so, so they are trying so to shape that demand by allowing or empowering the customer to choose between speed and fee, which is something that we would urge the, the regionals to look at. Yeah, but yeah. you know, as you know, Mark, the, the danger is okay in isolation. We just heard a sound bite. The reality is you, you can't make these decisions in isolation. They have to be done in tandem with a broader strategy or activity system that creates reinforcement or optimizes that system if we if we yep. want to look at it that way. And we've, we've talked about that before. That's that's critical. It's, it's, it's not just, as you said, one piece. It's the whole system working together. Yeah, and then the other thing I just would add is that, you know, Walmart like Amazon offers a discounted membership program for those people on federal assistance, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, they're really removing the barriers to pre that are preventing someone or giving people reasons why not to shop online and, and now giving them more reasons to shop with Walmart. So a great insight uh, and, and uh, into the Walmart numbers for November. Are there any other tidbits, trends, factoids that surprised you uh, in November? Yes. So we ask now uh, and have asked for the last several months, you know, where does your household primary shop, right? right. And this is in-store, online combined. And what we just saw in November and have seen since earlier this year around May is that mass has not only slowly caught up to supermarkets as the primary store for most for most households, they just yeah. passed supermarkets again with about 42%. And again, our report shows this incline that mass has been going through. So I think in a previous conversation we've had, you asked, hey, are these trends occurring in store as they are online? And I think this would suggest that, you know, more households are feeling some motivation to change where they shop and move towards mass. And Walmart in particular, now one third of all the US households that shop online are now indicating that their primary store of choice for groceries during the yeah. month of November is Walmart. So that could be in store or online or some combination of it. And then when you look at the 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 activity of those customers, you know, online, what we see is Walmart and Mass in particular have a much more actively engaged customer base that's also shopping online. And it may be a function of the fact that their omni-channel strategies are much more mature than most regional grocers. It could be the seamless uh, nature of shopping almost in real time between in-store and for shipment right. or for delivery. But when it really comes to it is if we look at those households that are, were actively buying groceries online during November and those households that said Walmart was their primary store of choice for November, three quarters of them were shopping online with Walmart, giving Walmart at least one of those e-grocery orders. So that is 50% of Walmart's total customer base shopping online and shopping online with Walmart, compare that to supermarkets, it's half that. Uh, about one quarter of the customers who were actively online during November and indicated supermarkets was their primary store, yeah. only one quarter of them indicated that they were also buying from their primary store. So again, it may go broader than just online to omni-channel or what some maybe people refer to as unified commerce. So that was another interesting twist. And again, from there, it goes into our cross shopping, our likelihood to use. But those are things we talk about each and every month. Yeah, I definitely sense uh, in an upcoming discussion or research piece, you know, a playbook on how regionals can better combat. I guess the is, is it too late? Is, has Walmart entrenched these customers now into their orbit and what steps can they regionals proactively take to, to try and win them back? Well, you know, if they're going to try to compete against Walmart for the center store items, that's a, a pretty that's a hard, heavy lift. Unless they're focused on their private label store brands, that is a differentiator. It really is, again, back to the perimeter and also underscoring not just the quality of the perimeter products, but the service related to the customer service related to their various services, whether it's pickup or delivery. You can see a lot of regionals really focusing on that perimeter, whether it's the fresh food service items, 
the catered items, the prepared food product, the in-store you know, presentation still matters. Yeah. So if in the 90s it was what's for dinner and we had a, a meal solution craze chasing Boston Market and, and retailers trying to figure out how to do that, we're, we're now at a stage of kind of full circle where we really need to address that because if that's being offered in a siloed separate platform that requires a different login and potentially two orders mm -hmm. being fulfilled, not only by the store, but by the customer. Like right. I, I placed all my groceries and I want I want my meatloaf for dinner with you know the grilled shrimp. Oh, Let I have two orders, two, two different picking windows. That's right. Then obviously that's complicated for both the retailer and the customer. Right. So the better and the quicker we're able to res resolve and reconcile those two, the better we're going to be able to leverage the strengths that we do have. David, f fascinating as usual. Uh, thank you for your detail within within the, the allotted time that our you audience looking, likes. You were looking over the horizon, yeah. <laughs> I want to do something a little special for our, our listeners. So I'd, I'd like to, uh, un what's your favorite holiday tune, David? Oh, geez. Um, do you have one, Mark? Let me see if it's the same as mine. No, I asked you first. Uh, we are the world. You are the world? <laughs> I, you, you put me on the spot, man. I, I don't know. My wrong. wife would be better able to answer that. Would you, would you like to do a rendition? No, Mark. I'm uh, I'm not from uh, an acapella of lineage, so no, no, thank you. All right. Well, but yeah. if you would like to serenade the audience, you are Canadian. You have the power to do so. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm fine. I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm I don't want to be a uh, uh, solo act here. Well, that's so, good. I appreciate it. But y if you were looking for a duet like uh, what uh, Lady Gaga and uh, Bradley Cooper did, I'm out, buddy. I'm out. That's. I thought that's you'd be different. all over that. I thought you'd be all uh, over that. Listen, man, I'm, I'm not into that kind of role play. So. In the shallow, shallow. <laughs> But the, you got it. You got it. I'm, I'm sure you're going to have security coming to get you now. So, <laughs> In all seriousness, uh, David, uh, it's, it's uh, another year around the sun. It's been a pleasure doing the, these monthly videos and, and more so with you. I wish you, uh, your family, uh, the best for the holidays and uh, health and happiness into the new year. And the same for our audience. That I couldn't say it any better myself, Mark, so I'm going to leave it at that and say you too, my man. Okay. There you are, folks. Happy holidays and uh, have a happy new year in 2024. Bye-bye.